Welcome back to the BG Sports Show presented by Sports Radio America. I'm your host, Baxter Colburn. In a moment, we'll get a chance to speak with uh, one of the more distinguished writers in the basketball world here in the Milwaukee area, Mitch Vomhoff of Boxketball.com. But first, we want to take a minute to remind all of you that you can find us on social media by going to our Facebook page and liking us by going to the BG Sports Show. You can also find us on Twitter at BG Sports Show and myself at Baxter Colburn. If you ever want to email the show, you can find us at BG Sports Show at gmail.com. All right, with all that being said, it is time to talk a little bit about the Milwaukee Bucks with Bucksketball's very own Mitch Vomhoff. Good day to you, Mitch. How are you, sir? Doing great, Baxter. How are you today? Fantastic, sir. Well, we got to just awesome. get right into it, Mitch. The Milwaukee Bucks, it's it, what? I, I don't even have words, honestly. <laughs> this season, I've never seen a team so hyped in such a long time and then to be where they are right now. And not to say that the Bucks are completely gone and dead to society, but I don't think 24 and 33 is where folks thought they were going to be at this point in the season. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, it's definitely been a, a, a step back, you would say, from, from a really surprising season last year that, a lot, that nobody really expected. No kidding. To have kind of an underdog team. Yeah, and I, I, it's just it's really hard because this uh, going into this season, everybody was saying, well, this is going to be a really, you know, quote-unquote good team this year. They've got Greg Monroe. They've got... Jabari Parker coming back. Giannis looks like he's starting to start to get get his act together. We've seen fl- we've seen flashes of that throughout the year, but I, I I don't feel like where they are right now in the in the in the division is a true representation of I think where they thought they would be at this point in the year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's true. Um, and you know there were a couple things that uh, you know people would could could point to. Um, you know, last year in a lot of ways was kind of a Kind of an overperformance, I would say, against against the real talent level of that team. Sure. Um, and then, and, and so this year, you you'd almost look at it as a little bit of a, a regression. Um, you know, obviously they, they did make some some big steps. You mentioned Greg Monroe, who hasn't quite worked out in the way they hoped he would. And and, and so yeah, so we're def- I think we're definitely seeing some kind of regression back to uh, to a mean of sorts. Mm-hmm. I would agree with you on that one. So um, we've seen Jabari Parker kind of step out and finally get to play more than just those few games that he played during his rookie season. What are your thoughts on how the the, the technically because it's still kind of his rookie year because he's still you know working to play that yeah. first amount of games. So how do you what, yeah. what's the young guy done so far this season that may or may yeah, not have impressed yeah, I, you? I mean Jabari, I think he's still under what you would call technically a full season of play. I think he's probably around seventy games at this point. Um, and, you know, we, we've seen some ups and downs, as you would kind of expect from a rookie. I mean, Absolutely. You know, in the first couple months, November, December, um, even into January a little bit, he was definitely, you could definitely tell he's still kind of adjusting to the game, and uh, while also getting the strength back now under him from an ACL injury. Yes. Yep. Um, but but it's definitely been promising, um, especially in, in, in February this year, to, to watch him bust out, and, and actually to watch the progression from the beginning of the year into where he is now, and he's really starting to run into form. Where he started out the year averaging under, you know, ten minutes and four re- or ten, sorry, ten points and four rebounds a game. To here in February, he's already he's up to fourteen and seven. Mm-hmm. So you, you're definitely you're starting to see, you know, he's he's definitely still got the athleticism he, he they had expected coming out of school. He's he's, he's gaining, an, you know, an awareness of he's still kind of bad on the defensive end, but he's definitely gaining an awareness of where he should be and what he needs to do. That's definitely improving. So I would say. There's still obviously some of the season left, and it'll be interesting to see how he finishes out, um, especially considering he doesn't have, you know, he's still working through that quote-unquote full season. Hmm. Um, but I think there are definitely reasons to be encouraged after, um, you know, a lot of people were disappointed with how he, with his first initial showing. I'm talking with Mitch Vomhoff here of Bucksketball.com about the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, Mitch, you mentioned Jabari Parker. Yeah, he's averaging right about right around 30 minutes a game right now. Uh, I do find it interesting, though, that the last couple of games we've seen him on the on the court a little bit longer, and he's done fairly well. We've seen him score over 24 points uh, kind of consistently the last couple of weeks here. Is that just because he's starting to get a little bit more comfortable on the floor now, or are all the nerves, you know, going away, or or is it just happened to be, just happened to be that night where shots were falling for him? Yeah, I think I think that's definitely part of it. Is, is the comfort on the court? Um, it's also worth noting that he hit towards the end of. Jan- uh, I believe it's towards the end of January, uh, past the, the full kind of one-year anniversary of the ACL tear, mm. which is uh, a, a fairly well-regarded uh, benchmark as to when an athlete actually really recovers fully from that injury. Yes, yep. So I think we're, we're seeing a really fully healthy Jabari Parker um, who's getting to play with his teammates and really understanding his role on the team, you know, getting out there and playing, you know, some good basketball like you expected with him coming out as a fairly polished rookie. 
Absolutely, uh, yeah. Now, you, you were talking about different teammates as well. We've met, we mentioned Greg Monroe in passing, uh, Mitch. Do you yeah. at this point we've had a we've had a pretty good amount of time to assess the Greg Monroe project, if you want to call it that, here with Milwaukee yeah. Bucks. What would if you had to give it a letter grade? What would you do? Uh, what would you assign Greg Monroe on his time with Milwaukee right now? Mm, yeah, this this is a tough one um, because there, there are a couple of different factors in play, and I would say it's probably about somewhere in a like a B minus C plus kind of kind of area because I think Greg Monroe has come in and really done what the team asked him to do. Um, you know, he's he's right around his career best in points per game, rebounds. That's true, yeah, yeah. And, which, which were the two things that, you know, they came in thinking that's what they wanted to do. Well, you bring in a big um, man, you want the big man to get the ball for you on the rebound, so that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, but, but but I think the, the, where the, the problem comes, and, you know, Greg Monroe was also lauded as Milwaukee getting a big free agent signing, and yes. that was definitely supposed to be a, a a landmark point for the team, saying yes, we can compete for big free agents, we can get guys to come to Milwaukee. There is really some concern about how bringing in a, a, a ball dominant, non defensively or, oriented big man mm. into a team where your three core players are already established, and you already kind of have determined the players that you want to be the cornerstones of your future. True. So if you're looking at Middleton, Jabari, and Giannis as your as your three kind of primary players, to have another guy taking a bunch of shots and changing the offense in a way that doesn't really suit those players, I think um, is a little bit of a problem. So That is true, yeah. I mean, the, the Bucks so, team that we've so, seen, so yeah. He's, he's performed well. I don't think Monroe really has fit in the way that they hoped he could. True, yeah. I was going to say, considering the uh, the Bucks teams that we've seen the last couple of years, the... I mean, not that Giannis isn't a, a big guy, but he's a different type of big guy than what Monroe mm-hmm. is. And like you said, yeah. you add that different dynamic of a true big man in the post, and it just it changes the dynamic of a team. And I think that's still kind of a feeling out period for the Bucks as they're trying to figure out, okay, what's it like to actually have a, a fairly consistent, fairly reliable big man underneath that we don't always have to kick the ball out wide and try to you know shoot shoot from distance all night long. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. Well, uh, one of the last things that also what we want to chat about with you is we're chatting with Mitch Vomhoff here on Buckskeball uh, dot com here on the BG Sports Show. Was uh, the the trade deadline was just a, a little bit over a week ago, and mm-hmm. a lot of rumors even circulated about Greg Monroe. And I heard MCW's name getting tossed around a little bit too. Chris Middleton. Yeah. Are you upset or not about what the what the Bucks did at the uh, the trade deadline? Uh, I'm generally. Not, uh, I'm generally not. I would say not upset with with what happened at the deadline, um, because going into it, it, it was hard to see any kind of really big move coming for the Bucks because they've already pretty well established the players that they want to keep around and the players they want to build around. Yes, um, and everyone else on the roster who didn't doesn't necessarily fit that doesn't necessarily have a lot of value in in, in a trading sense. So there wasn't really a big return to be had, um, and I know there were. There were enough rumors out there of them being fairly active in in seeking out trades. You know, they were linked to Ricky Rubio. They looked at Jeff Teague of the Hawks. Um, somebody even mentioned Kendall Marshall. There was a rumored uh, Greg Monroe for Drew Holiday switch. So I think there, I think there's a lot happening out there. But but from what best I can tell, um, the asking prices for some of these players or just the fit of the deal True. didn't work out. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, 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 so, and so that's the thing where you know a team can be active at the trade deadline even if they're not making any moves. And that's kind of how I feel the Bucks were, where they were definitely out there looking around, trying to make something happen, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. Yeah, exactly. And that's just kind of how it works sometimes. You hear about that in any sport, whether it be you know the mm-hmm. NFL or MLB or NBA as well. I mean, there's all the rumors and all the speculation, but until a player is actually has his bags packed and he's pretty much even until he's on the court in the team's jersey, the deal is never officially done. So, mm-hmm. all right, uh, Mitch. Before we let you go, uh, if you had to give yeah. out a pre or a, a mid-season MVP at this point, I know that the All Star break was a couple of weeks ago, but at this point in the season, if you had to give out an MVP uh, or a most surprising award, whichever one you really want to give, it's your award. So, who would uh, <laughs> who would you give that name to, or who would you yeah, give the award I, to? Yeah, I think I'd have to give my MVP, and this is you know, there's a little bit of recency bias in it, but I think Giannis Antetokounmpo has really come on and and, and shown he's taken the next step. Um, in his in his development as a player, um, you know, obviously a couple nights ago he had the triple double, which was huge, you know, for being noticed around the league and for his own development. But um, you're just seeing a, a kid who uh, is taking a couple more jumpers. He's he's starting to develop his shot. Um, he's really also coming into his own as a facilitator, which is going to be important for a team that uh, you know kind of has historically had trouble finding good distributors. 
Giannis is still kind of the player that they are hinging all their hopes on and really investing in as yes, a cornerstone yep. of the future, and he's been, started to pay that off this season, uh, and that's enough to earn a uh, most valuable award from me. Quick follow-up with Giannis on that one. Do you yeah. think in the near future we might see a, a larger, longer-term contract deal going to Giannis? Yeah, um, certainly. Um, I mean, he's, he's, he's obviously got one more year on his rookie deal. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see an extension for him in the next year or two. Um, the, the, other, the other factor there is that the salary cap is going to be rising pretty dramatically in, a, in the next couple of years. Yes, yeah. Um, so, it, so it wouldn't behoove the team to uh, get a deal done sooner rather than later yep. um, so that they have a little bit more space to work with. I wouldn't be at all surprised if they worked out an extension maybe this offseason or um, definitely sometime in the next year before he hits restricted free agency. Absolutely. All right. Well, we've just had the opportunity to speak with Bucksketball.com's Mitch Vomhoff. Thank you so much, Mitch. Mm-hmm. Where can people uh, find you on social media? Uh, yeah. I mean, you can obviously find me at Bucksketball.com. It's like basketball with, but with Bucks in the first half. Um, otherwise, you can find me on Twitter at Mitch Vomhoff. Uh, it's Vomhoff with one F. Uh, but yeah, find me there. Catch up. Sounds good. All right, Mitch. Thank you so much for joining us on the program right. today. Thank you, Baxter. Glad you could have me. Anytime. All right, we're going to run to a break. When we come back, we've got more exciting sports action to get to. You're listening to the BG Sports Show presented by Sports Radio America.